Hi guys, welcome to the channel and hope you guys are all doing good. So in these times where we are all inside our homes, we are really addicted to movies and let's face it, there are a lot of really good blockbusters movies all around the genre. Let it be Hollywood, which has like movies like Avatar, John Wick, Blade Runner and even Bollywood movies like Kumbhalangi Nights, Mahesh Indra Pradhikaram, Yovinda Vustakam. These all movies have one thing in common and I'm not talking about the amazing direction or the good storyboard or the production design. But I'm talking about the software which is used to color grade each and every one of them. So today I am going to talk about why I switched from the Adobe suit using Premiere and After Effects to the newly Blackmagic Designs DaVinci Resolve. So before I get into the topic, let's just brush up some history. Let's go back a couple of years back where Resolve was actually primarily used for only color grading purpose. And it's not just a color grading tool, it was a benchmark professional color grading tools. And all these movies were color graded in Resolve. And over the years, the team at Blackmagic Design had evolved Resolve to become a full-fledged video editing software. And it is simply amazing. Let's first see what all softwares were there in the market and what were their major achievements. Premiere Pro was Adobe's major video editing software, which was coupled with After Effects, whereby you can imply a lot of effects inside the video, including green screen replacement, object tracking, and many, many more. All of these were possible by Adobe's plugin known as Adobe Dynamic Link, which was a major invention at that time. What Dynamic Link really does is, if you have a project inside Premiere Pro and the project requires some kind of additional effects which is not really inside Premiere Pro like green screen replacement or object tracking, the primary solution was that you have to render it out from Premiere Pro to a file, then move this file to After Effects to make all these effects inside this video clip. And after making all these changes in this video file, you have to export it from After Effects and then you have to go to Adobe's Media Encoder to encode it to a format which can be readable by Premiere Pro. Yeah, this is quite a big process. But what Adobe's Dynamic Link does is, you can dynamically link Adobe's any project, any timeline, any clip from Adobe Premiere Pro to dynamically link to After Effects into this dynamically link file will have a real-time change on the Premiere Pro file. So dynamic link was the major brag of Adobe in the industry. In the market, apart from Adobe Suite and Premiere and After Effects, the major other competitor of video editing software was FCP or Final Cut Pro, which was a Mac exclusive software. And that itself gives you the burden of the lifelong commitment of a Mac system. A really good thing in one aspect, but the downside is your upgradable compatibility is really confined and any sort of upgrade costs you a hell lot of much money. But I am not undergrading Apple in any way because Apple had innovated the new A12 Bionic chips. The new Bionic chips that are found in iPad is a technological breakthrough iPads which have Bionic chip inbuilt have the ability to do 4K video editing smoothly and that is an editor dream because video editing in a very compact versatile system is a dream come true for any editor. Beforehand Apple used to use the Intel processors inside their MacBooks which really reduced efficiency and increased the thermal throttling which was a really bummer for them. But I think after like one, two years, they will introduce them new Bionic chips inside the MacBook, which will really up the game for FCP. But FCP had their tricks in their sleeve, which was the real time rendering, which is a major thing for any editor in his life. What real time rendering does is like the software simultaneously finds the cache, replace the effects and do every process simultaneously when you're editing the video. For Adobe, you have to select the time frame and optimize the media to see what you have actually embedded inside the video. So this is the history tour of editing software. Now 
In 2019, Blackmagic Design team had innovated this new software known as DaVinci Resolve. The new Blackmagic Design's DaVinci is way out of the charts. Okay, hear me out. The people in Blackmagic Design really thought out of the box. They didn't want to go for the traditional dynamic link process. What they did was really innovative. At their inventory, they had a traditional editing software, a advanced effect software known as Fusion, which is a replicate of After Effects. And apart from these two, they had a sound designing software known as Flarelight. What they did is fuse these three softwares to be one and they called it Blackmagic Designs DaVinci Resolve. Now, no more switching between apps, opening multiple softwares at one time. All you have to do to switch is just one click away. Resolve is the latest software in the market. So that means lesser bugs. The most hated thing about Dynamic Link was its inefficiency. Most of the times when you call the Dynamic Link, it doesn't work. And when it works, the system crashes. People at Blackmagic had put a lot of thought and traveled everywhere a video editor had gone through and brought about a system or a software which is really fine-tuned to their generation. That means a lot of effect packets are actually pre-built inside the system or inside the software. You don't have to go for an additional software or buy out an additional third-party plugin. Everything which is useful for you are actually inside the software. So everything that a video editor really required is actually inside the basic software itself. The third part is DaVinci is a node based system. If ever you had used any Adobe product, it's actually a layer based program. If you had used Photoshop, you would have known this very simply. What the logic behind Adobe's layer based system is like you have a light source and there is a lot of films in between. So in order to change anything, you are essentially putting a film in between the light ray and that change has been done through the light ray to achieve the final output. But Resolve is actually working on a different algorithm and a different system. Resolve is actually working on a node based system. What node based does is pull in information from one point and keep that information inside one node. So whatever you can do can be really specific to one thing. I will explain the node based system and their theory and the implication in another video because this is a really big subject that has to be discussed. Fourth point is that they also have the real time rendering as FCP. As I said, it is the newest software in the market and they had really researched what the editor really wants. So they have a different thing as a real time rendering. They had called it the smart cache rendering or smart cache rendering, something like that. Fifth point, Resolve is actually a GPU and CPU enhanced software. Adobe has traditionally said a lot of time to the users that you can enhance the software speed by also buying power from the GPU. But it was only an option and a tick mark. It doesn't actually work a lot. But Resolve actually had made a code so that the GPU as well as the CPU really works and truly use the GPU performance that is inside your computer for video editing. While Premiere and After Effects only has the badge but never had stuck to their word. If you are really clueless of what capabilities GPU and CPU enhanced software does, you should check out this video so that you are really informed on the basics of a video editing software. These are the few highlights that Blackmagic Design had done on the result and I emphasis on the word a few because there are a lot of things that Blackmagic had really thought about in their software like basic thing from arranging the files to having a lot of inbuilt effects inside the software and which ultimately cut down the editor's editing time to a lot. 
As the world goes, every coin has the other side. So Resolve does have some disadvantages. But for me, I don't think it is a disadvantage as such, but kind of a compromise. <laughs> the major thing that you will notice in front is the capability to collaborate and work. Because major production companies and a lot of people are using the traditional Premiere Pro and FCP and if you want to collaborate with them, it is really hard. But Resolve does allow you to collaborate by XML file, but the versity of collaborating with another software is kind of limited. The second thing that you will really come into notice when you switch to Resolve, when you're coming from a Premiere background, is the Rate Stretch tool, which is a really useful thing in Premiere and DaVinci Resolve doesn't have it. Another major thing that I have noticed inside Resolve is the importing of JPEG sequence. That is, if you are importing a JPEG sequence along with a video file, then this JPEG sequence is considered to be a video file and you can't get individual JPEG clips or JPEG photos, instead you get one file of video output. But this is kind of a compromise as I said, this can be eradicated by individually importing photos instead of importing photos along with a video file. The fourth point and the last point is actually the main problem inside the resolve that I have noticed. That is the speed ramping of individual clips. Where if you speed ramp a clip which is inside your timeline, which is actually edited from the original clip, the final speed ramped clip will also have a portion of the original clip, which you have to again edit and trim it out, which is kind of a bug. And there is no fix for it right now. Hope Resolve team fixes this problem in the future updates. Unlike Premiere, in which every update forces you to buy out a new system or upgrade your system for a better performance, Resolve's updates are really clean and crisp, and newer updates have prone to have better UX and also a better performance inside the system. So these are the main reasons why I switched from an Adobe Suite to a Resolve. Truth be told, I am still using Adobe's product here and there, I, especially After Effects, because I think uh, After Effects is an irreplaceable thing because there are a lot of things which are inside After Effects. And so unfortunately, our video has to come to an end. So a lot of effort has to be put in to make a small video like this. Mainly the research is a really time crunching task. So I'd really appreciate if you press the like button if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated on these kind of content. As always, stay safe. Peace out.